You are listening to By the Book, because if you don't look at the world through the Bible, you will never see it right. Welcome to By the Book. This is Alan Griffith, your host for episode 122. We have been talking about guidelines, principles that God gives us in the scriptures, and principles are wonderful. They do not address specifics, but they guide us through the specifics. They guide us all through life. Uh, they are the the guides that keep us going when we don't fully understand what's going on around us. But we go, we fall back on those principles. We go to those principles, and they are again what carry us through. Uh, today, I want to talk about a wonderful principle. It's given very specifically in Second Corinthians chapter 5, and I'm going to read to you. It's verse 7, and here's what Paul said. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, that little verse is given to us uh, as a, a parenthetical statement in the midst of Paul's discussion. He pauses in the midst of the discussion to give us this thought, this idea, this wonderful truth. And here's what he says. We walk by faith, not by sight. Well, I'll tell you, I, I like walking by sight. I like being able to see what's in front of me. I like to see what's coming. And uh, the simple truth is, you and I never know what's coming. And uh, you and I don't, don't know what the future holds. Uh, in terms of uh, the experiences that we are going to go through. But uh, we look beyond those experiences. We look beyond it to a trust in God that says, no, you cannot see. There's lots of things you can't see. But we walk, we live by faith. Now, that concept is going to carry us uh, into eternity, if I can put it that way, but it also is a concept that we live with every single day. Now, when Paul gave it, he was talking about the trials and experiences that he was going through, but how he looked beyond them to the eternal day. And he could basically say this, I can get through the hard times now because I know where I'm going. I know what is eventually coming. And so I'm going to pick up in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul has been talking about difficulty and trials, but in verse 17, he says this, for our light affliction. I want to tell you what Paul went through was not light affliction, but he had a, a perspective, a God-given perspective, which was to measure the experiences here on earth with what is eventually going to be ours in heaven. And when he measured those two, one against the other, he said he realized that as much as he had gone through here on this earth, and I tell you, I marvel at what people go through here on earth. I, I, just, I just received a, a message from a man who had a leg removed uh, a number of months ago, and now he is facing uh, having his second leg removed, and my heart aches for him, and his desire is to be a testimony for Christ in all that he is enduring and all that he's going to endure. And I, I'm praying for him. I, I can't give you his name, of course, but I hope that you will just lift him to the Lord and pray for him because I wouldn't call that light affliction. And when I look at what the apostle Paul went through, I wouldn't call that light affliction. But here's what Paul said again in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 17. He said, our light affliction, which is but for a moment. One of the things 
you and I realize more and more, I think, as we pass through life, is the brevity of this earthly experience. We are not here very long. Uh, nobody knows how long they're going to be here, but you know, if you, you hear somebody living into their 90s or they get to be 100 or whatever, we think that's a long time, but that sure isn't long compared to all of time or the eternity to come. So Paul had this perspective. It's light affliction, and we're only here for a moment. It's very, very brief. And then he said that this light affliction worketh for us or produces for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Now, for him to make that statement has a lot to do with the principle. We walk by faith and not by sight. He was saying, by faith, there's better things coming. I can look beyond the present. I can look beyond this earthly experience. And that's what he expresses in verse 18 when he said, while we look not at the things which are seen, their sight. He said, we don't look, we don't gaze, we don't focus on the things that we can see. But, he said, at the things which are not seen. He said, but we focus on the things which are not seen. Why? For the things which are seen are temporal. They only last for time, and time is not very long. But the things which are not seen, ah, that's where faith comes in. We can't see. We can't see the future. The things which are not seen are eternal. What a message that is for us. We need that message because, again, many times we'd like to see. I want to see. I want to understand but we can't, and we don't. So Paul goes on, and here is his, his confidence. Here is his faith. Second Corinthians 5 and verse 1, for we know. We know. Now, Paul had some experiences that you and I have not had and are not going to have. He had the opportunity to actually view the third heaven and he could say, we know from his own experience, but also as he was looking forward to the future, it was a we know based on faith. His experience in the third heaven showed him what exists. His faith tells him he's going there and he's going to share in that. And that's where our faith comes in. So he said, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, that's our body, if it were dissolved, if it got killed, if it got destroyed, we have a building of God, an house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. What hope that is. What hope that is. Now, you haven't seen that. And I haven't seen that, but that's where faith comes in. God said it. I believe it. Now, what's important about that? I not only believe it, but that has an effect on how I handle life now. That has an effect on the way I respond to the experiences I go through now, because I live with, and you live with, this out ahead of us. We know what's coming. Hard times now, but we know what's coming, and we know what's coming by faith. Let me go through the next few verses. Paul says, For in this, talking about our body, for in this we groan. I think of that man I just told you about a few moments ago. I want to tell you, he is groaning, he is suffering in this body. In this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. We desire 
the new body. And that new body is going to come there again. That's the promise of God. And we say we walk by faith, not by sight. We haven't seen that yet, but we're laying hold of that promise. And that makes a difference in how I handle life now. Verse 3. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Now, Paul was not afraid of death, but Paul knew this, that the new body actually comes at the time of the rapture, at the time of resurrection. So he was looking forward and, and not at all afraid of death, looking forward to heaven. But here he's expressing he'd really like to have that new body, and that's me too. If death comes and takes us, we know that as we see later in this text, we're absent from the body, we're present with the Lord, but, you know, we'd like to have that new body. And so Paul says in verse 4, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan, we, we groan in this body and suffer in a lot of ways, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, so not simply going to heaven, although he's thrilled with that prospect, but he said, but clothed upon that mortality. Mortality is the fact that we are subject to death. He says that mortality might be swallowed up of life. And again, that's rapture truth. If you die, you go to heaven. Your body is buried, but you, your person, you actually go to heaven. But right now, you are mortal. You are subject to death. When that rapture takes place, we are going to be taken immediately to heaven, and our new body is going to be given to us immediately so that we will move from the prospects of death, mortality, into the fullness of eternal life with the Lord in heaven. He goes on, now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the spirit, the spirit in you is kind of, is God's guarantee, not kind of, it's God's guarantee of your eternal life. Therefore, verse six, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Verse eight, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And then I skipped over verse seven. I go back to it to get the principle, for we walk by faith and not by sight. You know, I'm so glad I'm a Christian. And if you're saved today, I know you are glad you're a Christian because there is no hope for this world without God and his plan. And there is no hope for you or for me except for God and his plan. So we live on this earth. Don't know how long we're going to be here. Uh, we might want to know. Maybe we don't want to know, but we don't have that sight. We can't see that. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but we walk by faith. We're trusting God. We're trusting what he tells us in his word. Let me turn to another passage of John uh, 14. What an incredible truth. Probably verses that if you're a Christian, you know and you love. Here's what the Lord Jesus said. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. You believe, you have faith. You have faith in God, have faith in me. And then here's a statement that he makes. We haven't seen this yet, but we believe it. We believe it by faith. The Lord Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. He's saying to us, I want to tell you about a place called heaven. And I want to tell you what it's like, because you are here on earth and that's all you see. He said, I want to tell you something, that in my Father's house are many mansions. And then I love this, and it's... Uh, it's a testimony of the character of Christ. He said this, if it wasn't so, if it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I'm telling you, there is a place called heaven. I know people in heaven. You know people in heaven. 
but I haven't been there yet. You haven't been there yet. And the Lord Jesus is calling us to live by faith with this faith, this hope that in God's house, in a place called heaven, there are many mansions. And then he said this, I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare one of those mansions, if you will, one of those dwelling places for you. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith because knowing of this heavenly truth, it makes all the difference. We know our time on this earth is short. And we know that we don't know exactly what's going to happen while we're here. But we do know this. It's by faith. We walk by faith. It is by faith. It is by believing what God told us that there is a place called heaven and we're going. And then, by faith, we believe this. The Lord Jesus went on. And if I go and prepare a place for you, and he did go. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He said, if I go and prepare a place for you, here it is, I will come again. Now, that's common terminology for us who were saved. We talk it all, all the time. Jesus is coming again. But step back for a moment. And let that concept sink into your mind. Jesus Christ is coming again. And then he said that if he came again, when he came again, he will receive us unto himself, that where he is, where is he? He's in heaven. That where he is, there ye, we, may be, also. I live with that every day. I'm sure you do. If if I didn't believe what God tells me in his word, if I didn't believe that Jesus Christ was coming back, then I want to tell you, I would live totally differently than I'm living. I I would, uh, you know, head for the mountains. I would go somewhere to get away from this world and what's happening in it. But the reason I can't do that and the reason you can't do that is because we are left here for a purpose. We're not supposed to be hiding in a cave somewhere. We are here to be a testimony for Christ, and we need to stay at it. But we stay at it with with this faith carrying us through. He is coming back. And he could come back at any time. Now, people will laugh at us for that. But we walk by faith and not by sight. You and I have never even seen the Lord Jesus yet. We love him. We're grateful for him. But we haven't even seen him yet. Talk about walking by sight. But we trust him. We believe the message of the scriptures about him. We believe the words that he has given us about himself and about the future. And you and I live with that every single day. We live realizing we're we're going through this life experience, but absolutely confident that when this life experience is over, we're going to be with the Lord. And the hope that carries us through day to day is that he might come back today. We walk by faith, and not by sight. Now, that's our eternal hope. But you know, there's a lot of things that we go through here on this earth that we don't understand. There are times we'd like to have answers. I can say that without apology. There are things that I've experienced and gone through and and so on, and I'd like to have answers. But you know something? God doesn't always give us the answers. And it's important that in realizing that, we continue to trust him 
Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tell us to trust in the Lord with all our heart, to lean not unto our own understanding. Say, but I want to understand. I want to know the why of this and that. I want to know the purpose. I want to know the plan. No, the challenge is we trust in the Lord with all our heart, and we don't lean to our own understanding. If we do, if we try to, we're going to fall. We're going to fail. We can't do it because it's not available to us. Lean not unto our own understanding. But what do we do? In all our ways, we acknowledge him. We yield to him. We say, Lord, I know you're involved. Lord, Lord, I know that you either did what happened or you allowed what happened. You are my God. And I'm going to acknowledge you in all my ways, trusting then that you will direct my path. Now, I can't talk about this concept without going back to Isaiah chapter 55. And verses 8 and 9 are almost overwhelming in a sense, overwhelming with truth. Here's what it says. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. That's God. That's God speaking to us. My thoughts are not your thoughts. You don't think the way I think, God says. And then he said, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. You and I have our ways, don't we? At least I do. And I often look at things and I think, I wouldn't do it that way. That's not the way I would do it. If I could change things, I would change them. And God says, I want you to know something. I'm in charge, not you. And my thoughts are not your thoughts. And my ways are not your ways. And then verse 10. Excuse me, verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts, and we could put in the word there, higher than your thoughts. You and I are, are called to go through a lot in this life. And again, as Paul pointed out very clearly, we're not here that long. But there are things that happen, again, that, that we would like to understand. They can be very personal matters for us as individuals. I don't understand why this happened. I don't understand why, why God allowed that. Could be a family situation. Could be a financial matter. It could be the world situation and all the things that you and I see. And we wish we could understand, and we feel like if we could understand what's happening and understand why those things are happening, that somehow uh, we could handle it better. And God says, well, there's a lot of things you're never going to understand here. Now, there are some people who think we won't understand when we get to heaven either. I've had people say that. Well, I think when you get to heaven, you won't worry about it. Well, I won't worry about it, but I really believe that God is going to open up for us a whole lot of understanding when we get to heaven, understanding about ourselves, understanding about life. I think that's going to occur. But that if it does come, it's a long way away. Uh, it's not going to happen right now. And so what does God say to us? He said, well, here's why you can't understand. And it's because you have your ways on a certain human level, and I have my ways, and you have your thoughts on that human level. I have my thoughts. You and I tend to live with earth in mind, with today in mind, with tomorrow in mind, with the future here on earth in mind. 
And God operates from a totally different basis. God's perspective is eternal. And God is carrying out his way, his will, his plan with eternity in mind, and you and I simply cannot grasp it. Well, why is that important? Well, the reason it's important is because left to ourselves, we can become very, very discouraged and disheartened with the experiences of this life. And there are people I know of and and try to minister to who become very, very defeated and discouraged and to the point of depression, and they want to give up. They would just want to quit, quit on life. They want to quit on God. Why? Because there's all these things that they're going through and they cannot figure it out and they do not understand why. And yet the message of the Bible is you're not going to understand why. You're not going to see. We don't walk by sight. Think of all the changes that you would make in your own life, in your family life, in in this, this country, all the changes that you would make if you could. And if you say you wouldn't make any, then I don't understand it because it's a whole lot that I would make. But you and I look at life from that perspective, our perspective, what we would do, what we would like. And God steps in and said, let me tell you something. You don't get it. You don't understand what I'm doing I don't expect you to, but I do expect you to walk by faith. I do expect you to trust me. We'll never understand this side of eternity. So I want to return to Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust. That's faith. That's faith. Put your faith in me. You're going to walk by faith and not by sight. So put your faith in me. A faith that says, Lord, I'd like to understand, but I don't need to understand. I don't need need to understand in order to stay close to you. I don't need to understand in order to walk with you. I don't need to understand in order to press on in my service for you. I don't need to understand. But I'm going to trust you. And I'm going to trust you from the very deepest part of my being, my heart. I'm going to trust in you with all my heart. And I'm going to stop stumbling over my failure to be able to understand. I'm not going to keep battling with that. And there are people who battle through life because of the hurts and the problems, and they want to know why And they they keep asking God, why? Why did you do that? Why did you let that happen? You and I are not going to get that here. And that failure to understand cannot get in the way of our walk with him. We have to set that aside. Okay, Lord, I yield to you. Because again, your thoughts are so far above mine. Your ways are so far above mine. I need to simply yield it to you. I simply have to give it to you. And so I'm not going to lean on my own understanding. Rather, verse 6, in all my ways, I'm going to acknowledge you. I'm going to acknowledge the Lord. In other words, in all my ways, no matter what I go through, I'm going to give that over to the Lord. I'm going to surrender that to the Lord. I'm going to say, Lord, I don't understand. I don't need to understand. 
I just want to humble myself before you. I need your blessing. I need your care. I need your love, your grace, and your mercy. I need all that to keep on going, but I'm not going to stumble over this thing of, well, I can't understand why. And if we do that, if we yield that all to the Lord, here's a wonderful promise. He will direct our paths. God will say, I'm going to keep blessing you and guiding you and directing you. But never forget, we don't walk by sight. We would like to. We'd like to see. We'd like to understand. But we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Lord bless you till next time.